Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Diggity dink. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. New books, new books, new books. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is. Hi, I'm Kristen. Nightwing's number one fan. Oh no, I'll thumb wrestle her for that. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we got lots of new books. Uh, we have new books next week, too, but this time we'll talk uh, Nightwing 118. We'll talk Batman and Robin Year One, number one, uh, World's Finest, uh, Nothing But Nightwing. I know what you did last crisis. So, yes, we got Rob well, last. Nice. We got Rob last month, but this, so yeah, so this month we'll have. A new issue of Nightwing this week and a new issue of Nightwing next week. So, right. don't get spoiled. Yet. All right, all right. So, what do you want to discuss? What uh, I say, we save the Nightwing book for last, and Batman and Robin. We can talk the rest of the stuff. So, what would you like to talk about? Well, it came out first, so I guess we should start with "I Know What You Did Last Crisis." Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which I got because. I like the title. I thought that was funny. Um, I like when they have those punny titles. Uh, and it was pretty good. So the very first story is about Crisis on Infinite Earths. And it features 1985 Batgirl Barbara and Killer Croc. And it's really good. Oh, wow. Um, and then there's a Birds of Prey story that is, I forget the Crisis um that that one is uh but that one's really that one's really good too um and of course that one features oracle barbara so those are two really good ones and i didn't even know about this crisis but there's also dr flash or dr light the female dr light um in millennium which i think i missed that crisis um so there's a couple deep cuts but of course this is the issue where Dan DiDio wrote his little story about um, Infinite Crisis where Nightwing dies. No. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so we got the version where he dies? <laughs> yeah. And it's totally and it's totally ridiculous. Like you honestly almost can't be mad about it because it's so ridiculous that it just makes you laugh. <laughs> um, because what's in it is, so it's Nightwing. He is talking to Oracle and he sees something weird. So he goes into this warehouse and you can tell it's weird because he's like, I see this. And Oracle's like, I don't, what are you talking about? And then he goes into this warehouse and it's revealed that the weird person is Connor. And Connor is like, I died and you were supposed to die and I'm kind of mad about it. And so I'm, so now you have to die so that the world can reset and we can go to the way it was supposed to be. And Dick is like, isn't there a way we can figure this out? And Connor's like, no. And he just like shoves Dick into this sphere and he's like, and to make sure that the utopia, basically, that's supposed to happen, happens, you have to die an infinite way. Like, you have to, every version of you has to die. Oh, wow. And so Dick is going, like, through this endless succession of deaths. Uh, but, of course, in the continuity, after Connor shoves uh, Dick into the sphere... Uh, then he's all of a sudden in his basement and Cassie comes down and she's giving him a hug and she's like, oh, hey, baby. Um, and she's like, shouldn't we take those spheres up to the watchtower? And he's like, no, it's cool. They're good here. Um, and then they say, oh, Tim's coming over. 
and but he's dressing up as Batman, and it's like the superheroes just do it for fun now because there's no crime. Because apparently, Dick dying his infinite deaths has left us with a utopia. But also, uh, I mean, and they do say like, oh, you're sacrifice. You know, Batman when he sees him dead, Batman is like, oh, you're sacrificed, kind of thing. But honestly, Connor kind of looks like a huge jerk. <laughs> well, yeah. Um. So it was funny. I was reading. Um, some people's reviews on what is it like geek or something? The one where people can submit user reviews. Um, and this person, very funny, uh, Spidey Whitey's wrote, "Whoever let Dan to du- whoever let Dan Dildo write his murder porn wet dream needs to follow him out the door." I get the book is a horror book, but every other story is about overcoming a threat, and they're all fine. But that one story ruined the book. Dan character assassinates my fave Connor, who at least looks like himself, despite being written as a bizarre evil OC, sends Nightwing on a never-ending death trip for literally no reason, because Connor willingly sacrificed himself and came back a little over a year later, and I'm reminded of his boring-ass cookie-cutter relationship with Cassie as a cherry on top. I know it's an AU, but good lord, it was the worst story I've ever read in my life. (laughs) Oh, jeez. I mean, I don't think it was quite that bad. Um... And then somebody else said, well, that was something. The Dio manages to kill Connor's character as he slaughters every dick in the multiverse, LOL. The serious tone, the callousness. I have to say, the Dio is really playing into his internet persona. I didn't really like it, but it was so over the top, it didn't make me angry. That was CO2 goddess. I feel like they uh, sum it up nice. Those two summed it up nicely. That, um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I didn't really feel affected. I just was like, wow. That sucks. And yeah, I really felt more insulted for Connor, um, particularly because because of the way he has Connor keeping these spheres hidden in his basement. That That's very, and Kasi says like, oh, they should go to the watchtower. And he's like, no, they're fine here. I don't know. That's very, that's very shady. Um, it is. So yeah. That Dick gets shoved in and dies over and over. I mean, it's a weird idea that you know, if Dick dies, the whole universe will be better. Um, but I don't know. Mostly, it kind of makes. Mostly, he didn't write Connor very well. No, yeah. not at all. And again, it makes just seems to die. It just seems like he's going look, see, see, see. And it's like, and you know, if he if they had gone through with that plan in the first place, they you wouldn't have gotten a utopia story. Oh no, hundred percent not. You would have got you would have got Jason versus the tentacle monster. Yeah, you know, that's. I mean, you never you're never gonna get a utopia story no. in comic books because then there's no point in having the superheroes. I mean, you might get like an AU utopia or something, but that's not gonna be the main continuity. Exactly. Plus, does it make sense? Like, really, one hero dies, and that suddenly like leads to. <laughs> Peace on Earth. But yeah, mo- but yeah, like people have said, it was honestly like so over the top. And of course, how it wasn't even him dying in this universe. He has to die. And you see it in the, I think it's on, um, it's on DC Universe Infinite. So when it gets back up, you can, um, you can read it. But I mean, I don't know. That wasn't even part of the original Infinite Crisis, I don't think, was that, I mean, Connor didn't have to die in every universe. So, that, so the fact that he's uh, like, oh, Nightwing has to die every version of him. And you see in these spheres, like, mul- at one point, there's uh, images that have, like, multiple versions of Dick dying at the same time. <laughs> Just seems petty to me. <laughs> right, yeah. A lot of people said that it felt really petty. So, uh, I mean, yeah. Honestly, it was... Honestly, it was kind of hilarious um, that it's it's jumped the shark, as they say. <laughs> but the other stories were pretty good. And the one was with Barbara, both the Batgirl one and the Birds of Prey one were really good. So it does have a couple of good ones, but the Dial story is pretty ridiculous. Exactly. All right. And then... Because I was going to. But honestly, sorry, but honestly, Connor fans should be more upset by his story than Nightwing fans. (laughs) Well, everyone could be upset. (laughs) Well, I mean, because Nightwing gets to like make a sacrifice, make a sacrifice, and Connor ends up looking like a jerk. (laughs) And then uh, the nothing but Nightwing. That's that just came out right Uh, digitally. Yes. 
Uh, yes. So uh, they also sent an email out today about it. <laughs> um, so it's going to kind of be like those webtoons that I keep telling you to read since yeah. they see how successful Wayne Family Adventures is. So they're going, so it's going to be a, for your app so that you can, so instead of scrolling this way, like, like pages, it'll be you, and it'll be like you scroll it up like a no. webtoon. Oh, okay. endless, endless scrolling. Um, so it's just supposed to be um, just another, another option uh, for what you want to watch. And they do specifically say, hold on, let me bring up the email. I thought I saw it. They said, um, like the first chapter's out, but then the next one's not coming in until like next month. And then it'll be weekly starting next month. Yeah. It says it launches November 20th. So it'll be new web comics and then also reformatted mad DC comics and mad magazine. But so they say they have different, different genres. Um, so like there's a Harley Quinn one and it's romance comedy and nothing but Nightwing is action comedy. Uh, so it's by the same guy that wrote Red Hood Outlaws, which was the webtoon. Mm -hmm. um, it says after several failed civilian identity career attempts, a bar, a gym, et cetera, he lands his biggest deep cover operation yet as an international supermodel. He's got the eyes of the audience, the other models, and even a few agents. But he only has eyes for one thing, the poison ivy protege on the hunt to steal the expensive and environmentally harmful jewels around the model's necks and perhaps the models themselves. But can he serve justice and serve looks while traveling the globe? The spotlight is on Dick Grayson in Nothing But Nightwing because his first gig is an underwear print campaign. <laughs> But yeah. uh, I appreciate that it is action comedy because we know I love the comedy. Um, so that was my, like, it's really, I showed it to my friend today at work. I was like, you gotta look at this. Um, and I mean, the colors are good and it's so hilarious that the way they started out, it's like, I didn't think about my clothes that much. And they're like, as you scroll down, there's like two glowing peaches in a tree. Uh. <laughs> and stuff. It's really funny. I would say the only thing that I didn't totally love is he goes home from doing this um, model thing. Um, and of course, he has this guy's card because some casual capitalist is like, you smile too much and your walk is terrible, but you know, you've got good looks. I could make something out of you. Call me because a lot of my models have gone missing. And, you know, like totally uncaring that his models have gone missing. Um, and then Dick goes home to Barbara and Barbara breaks up with him. <laughs> oh. And she's like, you need to find yourself. You don't have any hobbies. You're just, who is, she's like, who is Dick Grayson? And so then she leaves and Nightwing and Dick is all sad. And then obviously, obviously Barbara breaks up with him. So he, he's going to become a model because he has to find himself. And he also has to find these missing models. <laughs> so a little bit absurd i mean okay I'll, I'll give it a read once the app starts working because as of we're recording this i was tried to read it not too long ago and the app uh you can't search you type something in the search bar hit search and it's just a blank screen so yeah i mean i thought it was i mean yeah it's fine i i was a little surprised uh, sad that Barbara broke up with him because, of course, that's super duper the opposite of what's happening in the main comic. So I was kind of like, oh, what? Like, why is this happening again? And of course, her being like, who is Dick Grayson? I mean, that doesn't really that part does not fit with um, with what's going on. It like that would have fit, you know. Several years ago, um, yeah, was, but you know it doesn't fit with them. But I mean, it's not supposed to, because I mean, you know, the Harley Quinn one is like Harley breaks up with Joker and she goes on the Bachelorette kind of show. <laughs> 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 and then there's and then there's Raven that is like a fantasy. She goes into some fantasy realm. So you know, it's it's desi it's designed to get different readers. You know, because like the Wayne family adventures. I mean, I love it, but it definitely is a bit different 
the family relationship is better um, than what's happening in, in some of the main in some of the main comics. So you know, it's just a hit. It's just to hit more people, so it won't be exactly like. But I mean, the the art is pretty good, and I mean, it's funny, and I'm I'm a fan of that. I mean, the Harley Quinn one will probably be funnier because it's Harley Quinn, but mm -hmm. but they do classify dicks as action and comedy, so. Yeah, it's probably out of continuity since the whole barber thing and stuff. So, I mean, it's just it's like, don't worry about it. It's just a fun little story. Right. And I mean, he's going to be a model, which actually he already was for a hot minute um, during Tentacle Monster era. Yes. <laughs> um, but this one. But I mean, you can tell it's comedy because hello, the butt in the name has two T's. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, it'll be a fun It'll be a fun thing to add to our repertoire. And I don't believe it will cost us extra money because I think it's supposed to come on to DC Universe Infinite. So hooray for that. Oh, wait, where is it at? DC, I think it'll be yeah. on DC Universe Infinite. Okay. Oh, I thought that, I thought it was out already. The first. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, the preview's out already. But I think once it gets started, uh, I think it will still be on yeah, Infinite. Yeah. yeah. I think. It's, that's, I thought that was. Oh, just the preview. I thought it was like the first chapter or something. Okay. Well, I mean, it is a whole. I mean, it is a whole chapter. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's. But it's kind of like a preview. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it does say episode. It does say episode one. I mean, yeah. it says seventy nine pages, but I mean, like that's hard to tell because. Like, how can it be 79 pages? It's, when it's, yeah, it's, it's just all, like, digital, like, digital only, yeah. Right, Although, I, yeah. I could see it once it, like, once it's all out digitally, they might, re, they might like, print it, like, on paper. Yeah, probably like they did with the, um... <clears throat> well, it's working, I clicked on it, and it's working in the... It's working online. Oh, is it? Like it, yeah, it's working on the computer. Maybe it's the apps because I I tried to do it on my uh, phone and my uh, iPad and it wasn't. Yeah. Huh. But yes, it says. It says DC Go, a new frontier of web comics publishing exclusively on DC Universe Infinite. So yeah, I think. Since we already have infinite, we'll be good. Because the webtoons is a different um, is a different app, and so uh, like webtoon is technically free. So oh, is, I guess is it, is it on webtoon? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Webtoons is webtoons is free. So I guess they're trying. So I'm thinking maybe they're trying to get some more of the webtoons people uh, to maybe invest in, in invest in infinite because i do feel like it's hitting a i mean there's obviously some some crossover but uh sometimes i read the comments which is always i should not do that uh but sometimes i do and a lot of times there are people in there who are like i like these guys what should i read so it's, there's definitely newbies um in there so i'm wondering if maybe they're dc's making these com web comics that are a little more in the vein of like Wayne family adventures in it to encourage to get the money of those people because you know it's all about those Benjamins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, I'm on webtoons, I don't see it. <laughs> what am I, old man? Where is it? No, wait, this is not on webtoons, only Wayne family adventures. Is oh, on okay, I thought you said okay. Sorry, sorry, okay. Just that thought, I thought, yeah. The yeah, so this is supposed to be like webtoon. But not. All right, DC, as far as I can tell, your app's still not working. At least to search, you know, so you can only read it. I mean, the outfit he's wearing on that catwalk, though, is... 
so ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, DC, I can't search on your uh, app at the moment. Marvel, I can, but not DC, so. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, I'll I take know. a picture and send it to you. Okay. I mean, I'm sure, hopefully, I should get it cleared up so you know, you'll be able to take a look. But... but this came out today. Batman Superman World's Finest 32 by Mr. Mark Wade. Yeah. This one was... Uh... Yeah, this is part two of us. Uh, what is it? Yeah, Shadows Fall. Eclipso is uh, imprisoned most of the Justice League. He takes control of Superman and Batman. And of course, the first place they go is the Batcave, where guess who's there? Dick. And uh, yeah, Batman kind of like tosses them aside. And then he sees them going through the computer looking for satellites for some part of Eclipso's plan. So then. Dick just like runs out of the cave going, hitters, I need hitters in transportation. So while uh, Eclipse is doing his thing, Robin runs to the Justice Society. Oh. Yeah, because. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, because uh, then they show uh, Commissioner Gordon and Barbara's there too. She's trying to call Batman with the bat signal. But then an Eclipso, bat Eclipso Batman shows up and like starts ripping apart the bat signal and then. Uh, Sandman, Hawkman, and uh, the Spectre show up, and but they, you know, Eclipse's power is pretty strong, so the only way they can break him out of his hold is the Spectre creates the illusion of uh, the Spectre killing uh, Dick, so that breaks Batman out of his, his little uh, mind controller because mm, he, he says, That was the wake up call I needed, thank you, never do it again. <laughs> Don't show me an image of Robin getting killed. And that's probably that's pretty much Dick's interaction because again they pre they kind of free the Justice League, but then Eclipse have kind of like almost seems to transform everyone into like crystal at the end. But but yeah, I mean Dick calls in the cavalry, and I'm glad Mark Wade said that he. Uh, he likes writing uh, Dick as you know in this book. You know he's like the third character, third lead in this book. Yeah, that's good. So I remember asking him like, "Have you ever put Wonder Woman?" He's like, "Nah." He's like, "I like writing those three. I was like, "Okay, cool." And again, I mean, it's always it's like. And again, he he didn't want to say it's like a flashback thing. It's more like a timeless kind of book, you know. But again, it's. Dick's time is Robin and stuff, and Mark knows his DC history, so it works. Yeah. Okay. But you know what else he wrote this week? Yeah, we know. Woo! Batman and Robin, year one. <laughs> pull that up. Yep, Batman and Robin, year one. With art by Chris Sandney, who I uh, remember when these two worked together on Captain America a few years back, it was really good. All right, so I know you read this one. Yeah, I did. Hold on, I gotta open it up. All right, here we're looking at what you sent me. And get back to the beginning. Oh my, that's quite the look he's got going on in uh, nothing but Nightwing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. I got it up. I'm ready. All right. So, yeah, we open it up and uh, with Bruce and uh, Alfred talking about Dick, because uh, as we see on page three, <clears throat> we're, because it's been like, what, three weeks or so since Dick's parents uh, have uh, were murdered. No, that's uh pretty soon. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Bruce and Alfred are talking about uh, how Dick is extraordinary, uh, compassionate, driven, quite physically skilled. He smolders with rage, as you did. Does as anyone orphaned by crime? Um, Because again, I always I always took it at this point because Alfred's like, 
if you really want to take him out the war on you know at the like as part of your war and he's like you know what i turn him down he's going to go out there unsupervised by himself so uh i also think i like when bruce says i don't have any experience as a parent and alfred says nor much as a child frankly uh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh but you do know anger and you do know grief but yeah, Dick's bored while reading these criminology books. So, and Alfred telling him about the importance of a good education. He's like, "There's nothing better than a uh, nothing is more important than good education." And Dick sees the bad signal. I can think of one thing. <laughs> I love his outfit. It's very uh, Batman '66. <laughs> oh, the red sweater and yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, when they run out, when they see the signal run right out of the room, I just hear. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Uh, but I also love Bruce, how he's like, mm. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, I don't know, Bruce, be a parent, but, you know, I know it's not your strong suit. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. So we see them, yeah. You know, they see the Batmobile tearing out of the cave. And... Mm. and Dick's all excited. He's like, this is it, the public debut of Batman and Robin, so... So yes, yeah, Dick has trained three weeks. Now we're going <laughs> into the field. Speaking of 66, I love when Dick goes, maybe it's the Joker. Wham, pal. <laughs> mm. Then Bruce is like all quiet. And I love Dick's like, oh, I know this is serious. He heard people and Dick's and Batman says, I usually spend the drive mentally preparing. If I'm quiet, it doesn't mean I'm angry. It just means I'm dropping all the pretense when i'm wearing the mask i'm me follow my lead so i do like that it's it's you know he's not being rude he even tells him he's like no 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 i just mentally prepare on the drive in so so don't be upset Aww. and then they get to the roof and uh yes introduce gordon to uh Robin, there's two of you. I don't know. Dick turns the signal off with his foot. Uh, yeah. Gordon, you got to be kidding me. I know. Mm. You know the city? It's a war out there, and he's so young. Name a war that spares the young. That's dark, even for you. Uh. So, yeah, it turns out it's Two-Face, and he's... He, uh, he stole a sealed foul from the GCPD. And Gordon says, I need it back unexamined even by you. So I'm thinking it's a foul on Batman, right? Uh, yeah, could be. I'm thinking I'm thinking someone's finally turned the tables on Batman and it's a foul on, you know, if you need to take down Batman. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, Two-Face would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. and they, oh, and then they because they're like, well, where's the two crime? And then Gordon's like, there is none, or you know, and they're like, wait a minute, and he never strays from his pattern. Mm. <laughs> then Dick jumps off the roof. No kid, no, that's a thirty-story fall. I love Batman. That's his element. I like how he's in the original suit. Oh, Dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that splash page. Yeah, the two of them just. The, you do have a sense of humor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you sure you're ready for this? Oh, you do have a sense of humor. Mm. So yeah, the uh, Batman saying, yeah, it's street informants. Uh, that's that's our lead. Not no, not always loyal, but the guy throws a grenade at them. Mm. So they follow this guy. <laughs> Oh, Dick, there. This thing got an ejector seat. He's like, no, even better as he drives up the side of the wall. Dick, cool. halt yon evil doer. <laughs> Classic. Yes. I love it. And I love, I love how uh, Bruce is like, you know, I didn't tell him the car could go vertical. I wanted to test his adaptability on the fly. A plus. So again, this Batman kind of complimentary. He's not just like, oh, you know, that's satisfactory. No, he's like A+. Plus. He's not a jerk. <laughs> he's not a Frank Miller Batman. <laughs> no, no, no. He's like, he's confident, fearless. Mm. Oh, yeah, so we do read, yes, the cape is uh, bulletproof. 
mm, it absorbs almost the full kinetic energy you have anything short of a 950 so by the way yelling isn't the same as teamwork <laughs> I jinx it by doing the worst thing possible, distracting him. Yep. His dick just barely makes his jump. Yep. And they break into that warehouse where two faces at. What does it bring your kid to hell day? Oh, this is interesting. He has an R on the back, too. Oh, wait, where's that? Wait, I didn't see that. Uh... So I wasn't sure when he flips off. I saw an R and I was like, is he back flipping or front flipping? But now in this page, when he's jumping down, you see he has the little R and then he has like a big R on the back. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay. It almost looks like it's on the bed, like his back, like where his belt's at. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is on the utility belt. But yeah, they, they they fall into this trap, which also seems very sixty six. Yep. Mm, yeah, because they both step on these panels and two faces, like the floor's covered in pressure mines. Mm. Now I've caught a duo, delicious. So yes, he's all happy. They caught two of them. Mm. And then Batman's like, "Why are you off your game? Why a single police foul?" He's like, "Single? Is that right?" Mm. <laughs> Dick, Batman, why isn't he just murdering us? So, yeah, and then Batman's like, uh, Two Face is saying about uh, how the city's about to get a lot more dangerous. And then, you know, he's like, Come on, Harvey, flip that coin. And he says, A new boss is moving in. He's been planting his advancement in Gotham for almost a year, and it seems. You, they've just been ordered to go to war on the Batman. Mm. And then he wants to know who the boss is. And Dick's like, well, he at least told us that much that the coin can't... Lucky the coin came up good side up. And then Two-Face starts laughing because no, it didn't. He said like, it wasn't a gift. It was a threat. Yeah, because what's approaching is so merciless, so unbeatable. It doesn't matter whether you know or not. He's like, die here today at my hands or soon at his. Your choice. Mm, so hit Two-Face and the goons leave. And Batman says, uh, copy my movements precisely. Jam the sliding plates. With, so they each pull out a batarang and pull it down. And then uh, fire their grapple guns. And <laughs> Batman says, run like hell. And they get to a nearby rooftop. Hmm. The dick. Do you really think those were live mods? Come on, I bet he was bluffing. And then we see one of the batarangs dislodged and the building blows up. <laughs> yep. And his face in that last one, tonight's takeaway, never bet against the criminal mind. And he's like, uh, like, what? Yep. And then the last scene is at Moldoff Airfield. Uh, Mr. Grimaldi and his uh, father have shown Showing up on this private plane. Oh, and oh, he might, I don't know if he's just technically, I don't know, is he a real general or not? But yeah, because his men call him General Grimaldi. Mm -hmm. Salute and everything. Mm, he wants to know if everything's in place. So yes, then let's see how formidable the bat is. I look forward to the challenge. And then he says, Yeah, no one knows I've arrived. They're like, Yes, sir. I mean, but I guess. Uh, they can't let the stewardesses and the flight and the pilots and everything know they're there, so they like, must kill the whole flight crew. And that's how the story ends. So, what you think? It's like the ring that they zero in on—that's on the old guy's hand, right? What? The ring they zero in on—that's the real old guy's hand. Oh, um. I think it looks kind of skinny. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, because it looks like he's holding the side of his wheelchair, yeah. I like it a lot. I was just curious. I didn't get a chance to look it up. Is this a new person, or has this Grimaldi been in stuff before? I don't know. I was about to look that up right now because, again, it's Mark Wade, so that, you know, could have been, like, a guy who showed up in one issue in 1963. It's, you know, it's Mark Wade. You never know. But, uh... uh... 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Uh... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything. So it might be a new character. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. Nope. No. Wait. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything come up. So. <laughs> yep, no, no, no DC connections here, so it might, might be a new character. That's awesome. Which I wouldn't be. <laughs> oh my lord! So he's writing uh, Batman, Robin, Year One, and World's Finest. So yeah, characters can come back and forth and. Went for the issue, in the issue of World's Finest where it's just like, oh, remember General Grimaldi from years ago? Yeah. That's true, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do like that we got uh, yeah, the scene with Alfred in the beginning. And hey, hey, we need Alfred back in the current book. So I like the art. It works really well for the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah these, it's yeah. cute, but like not too cute. Yeah, Chris Stanley <laughs> works well with Mark Wade. Yeah, they've worked together mm -hmm. before. And again, that's what Mark was saying in his uh, last time he showed up. He was because uh, he even said he goes, he was asking uh, Chris, he goes, he goes, what villains do you want to draw? And I guess he said Two Face. He's like, okay, we're going to put Two Face in this story. So I think it helps too when the you know the artist is like, oh yeah, I can't wait to write, uh, draw this guy or yeah, you know. yeah. But yeah, no, I like it. I thought it was a good start. And again, we got eleven more issues. So right, yeah, it is also kind of. I mean, I'm impressed that he went. I mean, it's kind of cool. And I understand that something that Mark Wade would do. I think it's kind of cool. Like, he really kind of went back like a deep cut. Because, yeah, I mean, basically, back in the day, it feels like Bruce let Digby Batman or Bruce let Digby Robin immediately. And I feel like in more recent things, they've tried to make Bruce, like, not have that happen. But, yeah, he's been going back to the golden age of like yeah this kid just came to my house i brought this kid to my house and now he's gonna be robin like like you said three weeks that's barely any time at all not even a month <laughs> yeah so i'm also wondering if some of this is if they'll need to be some because that's not a lot of time to process your grief either so no. so and again, I mean, like Bruce said, he has no experience. So it's basically like, well, this is how I dealt with my grief. So, so once again, Bruce, not, not the most, uh, I don't want to say bad, but just, you know, he, he has no idea how to process that kind of grief either. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see where it goes and you could definitely see that there's, um, some stuff for where there can be can be stress because yeah i mean your parents just dying three weeks ago is you still have healing to do <laughs> oh you think yeah <laughs> i mean not not even die murdered in front of your eyes right and it kind of makes it sound like they've already taken care of tony tony zuko but it'll be interesting to see if that turns out not to be the case well, speaking of Zuko, that's I, right. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Okay. So, Nightwing 118 kids finally a month late, almost a month late. Yes, we get uh, Fallen Grace in part five. Not only the last part of this story, but the last issue by Tom Taylor, as he Very set, sad. as he set to become the new Detective Comics writer here any day now. Yes, I think is that coming out next week. It might be, yeah. I didn't let them look ahead yet, but probably, yeah. Because it had, I'd say either next week or the week after. Yeah, I can't wait to see that because, like I said, the art on that looks incredible. I can't wait to see what Tom does. Um, no, if Dick appears. Oh, I'm sure he'll make like he'll. I'm sure he'll pop in from time to time. Right, but I mean, he none of the Robins have been a detective for a while, right? Um. Well, the the. In the last story, they they kind of had everyone like you'd see a, there was like a big battle in Gotham. You'd see people here, people there. Um, I'm 
trying to remember what the what's the next issue of uh oh, oh, oh. oh man detectives uh here we go yeah, it looks like next week, Detective 1090, so 1100's right around the corner. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, Mikhail Janin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. We're going to get into the Thomas and Martha Wayne murder again, so. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's if it's gonna be like this whole Nightwing thing where it's like, yeah, here's something you didn't know about it. Yeah, like I said, the art looks incredible. All right, so Nightwing 118. Uh, of course. Well, speaking of Zuko, we see him get arrested here. Mm -hmm. mm, but then uh, the cops let him out because. Uh, one of them is like, oh no, he has my kid. And then we see Heartless. Uh, yes, uh, Blockbuster's heart is not going to last too much longer. So he's like, he wants uh, Dick Grayson's heart. Mm, but then he gets on, he gets, you know, makes another public announcement as saying he's Dick Grayson. Uh, they say he's going to blow up Haven. Oh, they'll let, oh, my people will level Haven if you choose to stay. But if you do know that there will be there will be no Haven. There will just be blood. But then we see the Batgirls and Batman and Tim and Damien are out there looking for the kids. Oh, oh, we see shaved off the beard. Yeah, I love Barbara. Where are you going? To clear my name, take down a monster, and walk the dog. He was like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Heartless and his men show up in Haven. The people are there to try to stop him, but then uh, as the bulldozer starts and knocks, <gasps> he knocked over the Alfred statue. How dare you? Yeah, he's a big jerk. So, but then yeah, Dick Dick shows up as Dick Grayson with Haley. He's like, turn around and leave, and everyone's like, Dick Grayson. But I thought I told you he wasn't Heartless. And I'm just like, okay, I know it's a comic book, but it's like Heartless's mask only really covers like the like the top like it, most of his face and like maybe a little bit on side you can't tell he has blonde hair maybe they think he dyed it because i mean this is kind of the first time they've really seen him right i guess yeah maybe some people don't know what dick looks like i don't know mm. so yeah so dick's basically in his face. well i also i don't know i think what's his face he was probably heartless Sheldon was probably thinking he'd come as nightwing oh yeah yeah i would think maybe so yeah, he confronts him as right. Dick, and I love. He's like, yeah, yeah, you tried, you know, you tried to frame me, you wanted to hurt the city. Uh, the people are resilient. <laughs> but the heartless goes, I know who you are, Nightwing. You know, under his breath, and Dick goes, and yeah. I know who you are, Shelton. <laughs> I'm ready to face the full consequences of my dual identities becoming public. Are you? <laughs> I love the the phone rings. Like, hold on, I'll take this. <laughs> And his sister Mayor calls and says, uh, Dick, I'm with Oracle, even though she's dressed like Batgirl. Uh, and she said, yeah, the others, they found all the children being held hostage. The commissioner has them. So that's when Dick turns to all heartless as men and holds up his phone and says, uh, that wasn't the mayor. To any of you working for this man, out of fear for your loved ones, I want you to know that the children heartless was holding hostage are all free. They're safe. The man controlling you no longer has any control. I love he looks at Heartless. You know the difference between your people and mine? My people actually like me. Yes. As they then punch Heartless in the face. Turn on oh, wait, him. In the chest, excuse me. Yeah, they turn on him. Yeah, because he sucks. <laughs> and then Dick says to the kid, Ellie, will you hold my dog? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Dick chases Heartless. and Haley gets away, though. She wants to chase him. Dick's changing on the street as he's chasing Heartless because he says, yeah, thanks to all his enhancements, he's a lot faster than me, which means he's keeping me close on purpose. Mm. But then, yeah, Heartless goes high and then he jumps down and he's like, oh, 
Maybe we can find you some stairs or gradually sloping decline. And Dick's like, eh, he thinks I still can't jump. Thinks I'm afraid. Heartless thinks he broke me, but I put myself back together. Yeah, we see him jump off the roof there. And then, I love that look. How? And then I love that panel, just him kicking him in the chest. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> My teeth. <laughs> just like old times. <laughs> The way I'm letting you escape heartless, and then yeah. Uh... What's this guy's name? Uh, Evil Alfred is just like you. You think you can hurt my child? And he's like, damn it. So yeah, heart. So heartless gets the drop on Nightwing and puts it. He has a gun to the back of his head. I'm like, oh no! Don't tell me he's gonna get shot in the head for the third time. No way! I so I was a little bit confused. I think. So I guess they both have guns. So I was like, is it Heartless who has the gun on Dick? Or is it the evil Alfred? I, know, I thought it was evil Alfred. Because, yeah, because Haley shows up. Grabs yeah, that's what I was thinking. Evil, Haley, evil Alfred's uh, arm in her mouth and then pulls the gun and takes the shot for Dick. And I was like, oh, don't you dare. <laughs> but, yeah, evil Alfred goes in the water. Mm. And then uh, Zuka Zuko's there too. He's like, I can't see him. And Heartless says, "This all started with you. I thought I modeled myself off you. I didn't know who I what who I was until the flying craze hit the ground. But you weren't even trying to murder the parents. It was all about him. You thought I thought you made me Zuko, but I guess I made myself. But at least I get to take something else from you, Dick. And Dick's like, No, I get to take your justice. And uses that heart grabbing gun on Zuko's head. So. <clears throat> Zuko's dead. Again. <laughs> that happens to him a lot. <laughs> I know. But yeah, Dick's like, Zuko was supposed to be put on trial. He was supposed to answer for his crimes. He was supposed to answer for what he did to my parents. This man has taken so much. So yeah, Dick nah, lays Haley down and then uh, you know, Heartless swings at Dick and he's like, Shelton's big and strong and merciless. That's always been enough for him. But it's not enough for me. He just like dodges his punches and hits him back. Cartless, mm. are you angry? I'm over. I'm just over it. Over you. Ever everyone like you. The self-obsessed, the greedy, the entitled. You thought you could buy strength, but you didn't put in any work. You bought brute force and that doesn't make you powerful. And Heartless picks up that shipping container. I am. But then that heart's uh, messing up, and uh, Dick's like, what's wrong? He's like, oh, heart, Blockbuster's heart. <laughs> Dick, oh, Blockbuster, oh, man, he took that heart from a gorilla. So I'm like, okay. Uh, like I said, I th we've slowly rolled back all the all the uh, New 52 stuff. So I'm like, okay, so the 90s story's still in play, okay. <laughs> That's really time Everything old is new again. <laughs> That's right. Although, but not his death at the hands of uh, Tarantula. Okay. Yeah, hopefully not, because then he also got raped. It would be nice if he could have less trouble. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, Blockbuster didn't get murdered by Tarantula because he's he was around till just recently. So right, yeah, exactly, exactly. We're picking and choosing what what's in continuity, and what's not. Oh yeah, that's. Oh yeah, I hope that. That's the beauty. I hope the rape's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you you guys really should have done some research before taking a third hand to a part. Looks like his face is falling apart too. Yeah, well, I think he's you know he's part cyborg, so he's like all metal yeah. underneath there and stuff. Yeah, but Dick's Dick's still willing to like save him, and uh, Carl was like, "You can give me your heart." And Dick's like, "No, pathetic. There's nothing you can do to save me. So that's it. What a waste. An entire life lived, and you added nothing to the world." And Heartless says, yeah, that took the hearts of 36 parents in the city alone. Everyone will remember Shelton Lowe. He's like, no, no one will. <laughs> you think I can be forgotten? I'm Heartless. So what? You're not special. You're just a violent, cruel bleep with a monkey heart. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hide, and we'll hide your real name. Shelton Lowe and Heartless will never be linked. <laughs> you can't. I can't. I'll have help doing it. Oracle will erase you. Only your victims will be remembered and celebrated. You will be repurposed. You will turn into a symbol of what the city can overcome. 
another savage evil who couldn't beat us, nameless and faceless. Reminder that the city can fight monsters and win as he picks up Haley. Mm. And then next we see Dick at his parents' grave talking to them. Mm. And then his sister shows up. So I can't remember. So the body, his sister's bodyguard. So that's that's her girlfriend. I, I'm like, did we have that information before or no? Uh well no it's her wife so I don't think oh, they the wife, yeah. I don't think they confirmed that I just yeah. feel like that was the assumption I was making okay yeah 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 I but I'm just I like, feel like no. it was heavily implied yes <laughs> okay yeah but they never came out and said it okay I don't think so yeah because I was like okay I was like um that's just not, I'm like did I forget or I'm like you know it's just like, but yeah like you said it was heavily implied but. Mm. Yeah, I definitely feel like I would have remembered if wife so i mean definitely it felt like girls like they were together but this is the confirmation that they're married yeah. i didn't yeah i didn't know that they i'd assume they were together i didn't know they were married i mean i guess there's no problem with it but i don't know it seems weird that like your spouse is your bodyguard that's how they met i, I guess i guess yeah, yeah yeah but i mean you can always get another bodyguard i mean do you really want your spouse to be in the line of fight you know if you're getting shot at you want them to th well i guess you know. Well, I don't know if maybe she, I don't know if maybe also since Blockbuster was trying to lean on her and stuff since oh. she was, since he thought she was Zuko's daughter. I'm also wondering if it was kind of, I'm going to tell people that that's my bodyguard so they don't know she's my spouse so they don't try to hurt her. That's or it's like, too, you know you can trust this bodyguard. Yes, that too. Mm. Oh, and then those roses uh, Barbara gives them to put on the grave, uh, the Pennyworth blue. Mm -hmm. mm. And then I like this because, yeah, he's telling his parents about Alfred and everything. And then under his breath, he's like, Mom, Dad, that's Babs. I hope I get to marry her one day. <laughs> Me too, bro. Me too. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yep. Yeah. BAT, I just wanted to finally come and say thank you. I love you. And I wanted to tell you that I found a new home. My heart is here. Aww. And then we see Nightwing and Batgirl. And I'm assuming that's a uh, confirmation that she lived. Haley sitting next to them. Right. So. Fight wing. You can't put a good dog down that easily. <laughs> good, good. Okay, because at first I was like, wait a minute, we didn't see Haley. What happened? But yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that last we're... page. It's almost like a uh, impressionist painting, just the sky. Yeah, it's kind of like bingo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what do you think? The wrap up of Tom Taylor's run. What you? What did you think? Yeah, it was good. It was cute. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a huge, big. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was interesting. I feel like some people might be a little disappointed that it wasn't more of a. I don't know, like big thing. Yeah, but I mean, you wrapped up. I mean, he wrapped up the heart. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in his oh, all that. He emphasized what he wanted to emphasize, and I think the only thing that surprised me was that Heartless ended up dying. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that he ended up dying. I was a little surprised that he just like lay there and died and Nightwing was standing there. I mean, there wasn't really anything that anyone could do. I guess I should say I was impressed that he died while Nightwing was there and Nightwing was like torturing himself. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, again, I think you had to get, take him back to that secret lab and even if he had a heart, you'd have to do the, I don't know what evil Alfred had to do, like to put that new heart in but no yeah i'm not saying yeah it made sense with that i'm just saying i'm impressed that that they have allowed him to be healthy enough that he realizes there was nothing i could do and i don't need to sit here and feel guilty about heartless being dead you know 
Well, especially after this guy killed like 36 people. It's like, you know, that's a. Uh, no, I know. It's just sometimes, oh, like yeah. after blot, you know, like after Blockbuster or sometimes depending on the writer, you know, then after that happens, Bruce would go into, you know, some sort of spiral of guilt about like, oh, I couldn't save him or whatever. So, like, I was impressed that he died and we don't have to have a guilt trip. <laughs> I, guess I, I, I had a feeling when he found out Dick was Nightwing. I'm like, yeah, this guy's probably going to end up dead by the end. Yeah, and I had kind of forgotten that he needed those hearts to survive and that he wasn't just collecting it to be a jerk. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. Like I said, I was just surprised, pleased, but surprised. I mean, it's, oh, me. it's very fitting with Tom's run, but also it... I could have seen another writer then using this as like fuel for angst. So oh. I feel like that's not going to happen. And I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. 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 And again, like you were saying, there wasn't like a big like explosion moment or anything. And again, it's, I think that's like Tom's uh, signature for this book where it's like, it was more about the human moments and not the, you know, the, you know, mm -hmm. and again, yeah. we did get some good action scenes. Like I said, when he jumps off the thing and surprises heartless and kicks. Yeah. On. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, I I was I was satisfied with this. Were you? I like I've mostly been satisfied that we didn't have all kinds of tedious relationship drama. Like oh. he's getting along with people, people are getting along with him. He's with Bab Barbara. It's normal. He and Bruce aren't fighting. Like no one's being a jerk face. It's nice. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So, anything else? I think that's it. All right. So, yes. Next week, again, more new issues. We'll, we'll get the next issue of Nightwing one nineteen with the new uh, creative team. So, we'll see what uh, we get there, and we'll get to uh, Titans number. What is that? Sixteen. Uh, it's right here. Yep, sixteen. Okay. Which is also the new team, so yes, also a new sense. team. So yes, yes, uh, yes, both all in books. So, uh, and then I don't think there's a date yet. I was looking, but I, I think sometime in November, Harley Quinn season five is supposed to premiere. So, oh, nice. You know, we had a Nightwing uh, cliffhanger there. So hopefully, right? Yeah, we'll see. We'll maybe, see but yes, maybe in November for. We'll be able to discuss that. All right. But yes. I'm sure it will be a hot mess. Yes. But next week, new issues, more new issues. Uh, all right, kids. So send us your thoughts on these new issues. Uh, again, uh, the, uh, the upcoming issues, anything. If you want to put, if you want to submit a request for a, a, a Dick Grayson story for us to cover in 2025, send it in. Mm -hmm. Uh, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38-CAPES and remember you can find all things Capes Lunatics episodes, social media, merch get your new merch, get your classic merch uh, there's a cash app link uh, so if you want to rain ran the money on us so we'll that up to threaten you uh, and of course the Patreon, where again, you never know what you're going to get there. Uh, it's always uns uncensored, exclusive to you. And, uh, if you're a patron, you can, uh, request topics for me and Lilith to discuss as Justin has already done. So, uh, find the Patreon at patreon.com slash capes and lunatics and find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network, tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right. Now, enough of that nonsense. Now for the real uh, the real plug here. All right. And again, if you want more, if you need more Dick Grayson in your life, and you, you always do, uh, and you want, you want to dazzle your friends with your knowledge of all things Dick Grayson, yes, you must pick up Dick Grayson Boy Wonder on Amazon. Again, you know you're on Amazon. Go pick it up. <laughs> Makes great Christmas print. Makes great stocking stuffers for Christmas. Or any holiday. I need a big stocking. <laughs> well, some people do. Or heck, or heck, it would be great uh, dinner table conversation for Thanksgiving. So, yeah, get it now. Read it. And show your 
family or knowledge of Dick Grayson. So yes, it's on Amazon <laughs> now. And then of course you buy that, you, you do support an educator. So there you go. That's right. <laughs> All right. Kids. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, again, next week, new, more new books. The next issue of Nightwing. <laughs> Boy, we're gonna want that every every time now. A new nightly book every week. Come on, let's put on multiple nightly books every month. Come on, the regular <laughs> nightly book, yeah, untold tales of Nightwing. Come on, do one of those anthology books where everything you know, people can write stories of Dick and not, you know, any era. You do Dick as Rob, Dick as Nightwing. Agent 37 as Batman. You could throw in Earth too, Dick, where he's grown up, Robin. True. Where's those pants? Titan <laughs> stories. All right, kids, come back. Remember, join us same wing time. Same wing chat. Nightwing news. All right. Thank you, Tom Taylor. <laughs>